next two hours, we will have fun, a case-based discussion on practical pulmonary pathology. And uh, this is my objective. I always want to start with histology of the lungs. And then there is a common thing that is used in lung pathology known as six pattern analysis. I don't know how many of you know that. I follow the whole lecture in the six pattern analysis platform. We will go through the selected cases and we will end it up with the molecular changes. And I will give you some take home message and references. So to start with the histology, you all know the lung develops in the embryonic period and then fetal period and then during birth and postnatal growth. Some practical points are there. First thing, it is known as embryonic from weeks 3 to 7, pseudoglandular in 7 to 17, canalicular in 17 to 27, sacular from gestational week of 27 to 36, and uh, it is uh, more like alveolar in uh, weeks uh, 36 to up to 10 years. By the age of 10 years, we all will have a fully developed lung. In the pseudoglandular phase, we will have glands. If somebody says this is lung, nobody will believe. And uh, probably you all might be doing the fetal autopsy and you might have seen these things. There's a lot of uh, mesenchyme in between the glandular epithelium. And one thing you have to remember, the fetal type of uh, adenocarcinoma will exactly resemble the pseudoglandular pattern that you keep it in mind. Next one is canalicular. If you put so much, some air in the gland, what will happen? It will become a tube. And that is what canaliculi means. They are all tubules and they come together and the mesenchyme in between will become less in number. So this is the spectrum of changes. The mesenchyme will reduce in number amount and the air space, supposed to be the air space, they get bigger and bigger and they come closer together to the blood vessels. And this is the sacular phase. You can see the alveolar spaces more dilated and the mesenchyme has reduced much in amount. And the alveolar phase almost look like a adult lung. And uh, the viability is there only when the baby is from the sacular phase. That's why, the, why it's very easy to reduce the mortality when the babies are born after weeks of 27. So that also you have to keep it in mind. How do you remember this thing? I imagine the balloon, which is not at all aerated. So this is known as pseudoglandular. And when there is mild amount of air, it slightly increases and become tubular in size. So it is known as canalicular. When you increases the air in the canalicular space of the balloon, then they will become sacular. And when you keep on increasing the air, then it will become alveolar. So please remember pseudoglandular, tubular, sacular, and alveolar. The practical uh, point there is the pseudoglandular pattern will be recapitulated in fetal type of adenocarcinoma. And the viability is very good after the sacular phase. Coming to the histology, lung is also divided into functioning units. Remember in the liver, we talk about the unit uh, hexagonal plate. Like that in the lung, it is more pyramidal or round shape. And each in the center will have the airway, bronchus, and the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery and the airway, they go together. And uh, it is in the center. Whereas the pulmonary vein and lymphatics, what happens there? The blood goes to the alveoli, gets aerated, and then it uh, passes through the vein into the various branches of the vein and it forms the septal vein and then it comes to the interlobular bronchial vein and sorry pulmonary vein and it will have the lymphatics also there. So the practical point you have to remember is artery and uh, airway they are always paired and they will be of uniform in size. Whereas vein and lymphatics, they run in the pleura and the intercepta, interlobular septa. Why we have to know that the diseases affecting the airway and the pulmonary artery, they occupy the central portion of the uh, functional unit. Whereas the one that involves the pulmonary vein and the lymphatics happens in the pleura and the 
interlobular septa. The example is here hypersensitivity pneumonitis because the antigen come through the airway, the fibrosis and the granulomas they are seen in the center. Whereas in sarcoidosis, it is predominantly affects the lymphatics and the venous system. So they happen in the pleura and the interlobular septa. And this is the cross section of the trachea or bronchi. Why I say that is because of the cartilage. Trachea and bronchi will have the cartilage and they will have a pseudostratified ciliated lining epithelium and then lamina propria, submucosa and the muscularis. And in the posterior plane, the cartilage will be deficient and we will have lot of glands, salivary type of glands. Why we have to know that? This is the origin for the salivary gland type of tumors in the trachea, bronchi or in the uh, central portion of the lung. What happens in bronchial? The cartilage are not there to support. So the mucosa is thrown into stellate shaped uh, corrugations and uh, cartilages will be absent. So this is bronchial. So you should be able to differentiate trachea and bronchi from bronchioles by the absence of the cartilage.